to know the divine will and to see the righteous one, Jesus. By the way, the connection to the shared God between Paul and the Jews would also seek to soften the disagreements in the defense speech. Okay? So, Paul is saying, hey, I'm, I'm still honoring the true God. Okay? But they're saying, no, if you're disagreeing with Moses, you're disagreeing with the temple, if you're disagreeing uh, with circumcision, you're dishonoring God. But, but notice that it's still the same God. Um, it's the God of their fathers, the God of the fathers, um, God of their ancestors. Um, from Judaism, it's still the same God fathers has appointed him to know Jesus. Okay? Um, by the way, I don't know if anyone else notices, Luke actually gives us some additional information here about Paul, which he had not revealed anywhere else. Can somebody read um, 22, um, 17, and 18? It happened when I returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple that I fell into a trance, and I saw him saying to me, Make haste and get out of Jerusalem quickly, because they will not accept your testimony about me. Okay. We, we know nothing of this, by the way, in Paul's letters or in the book of Acts. It's just some new information that we're given here. Um, some, so at some point after Paul's conversion, he goes back in the temple. He's praying in the temple. He has some sort of trance in the temple, sees a vision of, of Jesus, and Jesus warns him to exit Jerusalem. Okay? Um, and the interesting thing, by the way, oh, sorry, the, the next part too. Um, so Paul kind of responds, he says, verse 19, Lord, they themselves understand that in one synagogue after another I used to imprison and beat those who believed in you. And when the blood of your witness Stephen was being shed, I also was standing by approving, watching out for the coats of those who were slaying him. Paul was like a coat rack kind of guy. Um, but Jesus says to him, somebody read verse 21. Go, for I will send you far away to the Gentiles. Yeah, okay. So notice, <laughs> Paul's argument that he received a revelation from heaven to seek out the Gentiles while praying in the Jerusalem temple was too much for the conservative Jews to accept. He's saying, I got a revelation in the temple, not about Israel's holiness, but about Israel's need to go to the Gentiles, okay? Remember, by the way, the purpose of the book of Acts? To start from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. So he starts from the temple and goes all the way to the Gentiles. It's supposed to be a light to the world, a light to the nations. This Isaiah uh, um, theology, by the way. Um, and at this point, by the way, he doesn't finish his speech. Um, in verse 22, they listen him up to this statement. And then they raise their voices and they said, away with such a fellow. Okay? Did he finish his speech? No, like up to this, they interrupt him and they stop him, okay? Notice they stop him at this point because he speaks something blasphemous against the temple. Remember, this is actually the point in which Stephen was killed because Stephen spoke something blasphemous against the temple, okay? As I try to demonstrate to you, the Jews, they did not mess around with the temple. They did not mess around with this stuff, okay? So at this point, the speech is interrupted by the audience and they demand that Paul be removed from the earth, like actually says, from the the yeast in Greek. <laughs> be removed from the face of the earth, literally to be killed. Okay? So, Paul again is taken to Roman custody and prepared to be examined with the whip. Okay? Um, it was customary to beat or whip a prisoner in order to get the truth out of him or her. Okay? We don't do this today. Today, we don't, we don't, we don't beat people to get the truth out of them because we think, well, they'll say anything just to get out of the beating. But from their perspective, you beat somebody, and then they were in a condition to get the truth, okay? Um, and uh, so Paul, we've already seen this, by the way. Where else does Paul announce his Roman citizenship? Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, all right? Because remember, he, he, he announces this. Um, there, there's the issue with the, uh, the jailer, and he converts the jailer. This is in, uh, you know what city this was? Philippi, it's in Philippi. All right, so he announces his Roman citizenship, um, and remember, I've already pointed this out, uh, it's illegal to imprison or even to beat a citizen without a trial, okay? So he is being um, beaten and tried uh, while he's uncondemned at this point. He has not been demonstrated guilty, okay? And this strikes the fear in the hearts of the punishers and the Roman commander. Uh, I, I, I think it gave you some sort of indicator or some sort of paper or something that, that demonstrated that, uh, that these people could be punished for doing this. I mean, it was, they knew that it was, that they could severely be, um, be reprimanded 
Uh, it, it was, I mean, it wasn't like a minor offense like running a red light. It was like a big criminal offense to abuse a Roman citizen. Well, even, that, even when they try to, uh, when they escape jail, like the one car tried to kill himself. Yeah, like they, it, was, it was such a big deal at this point. Okay, so they are really, really upset. Um, you know, of course, the commander is like, hey, I received this with a large sum of money. Paul announces that he was born a Roman citizen, which means he likely acquired it from his parents. That would mean also that his sister was a Roman citizen. It doesn't really matter, but um, this is not new information for us. We already knew that he was a Roman citizen. We also learned back in chapter 16 that Silas was a Roman citizen. Okay, uh, and then basically on the next day, the commanders, uh, the, so the commander summons the chief priest and the Sanhedrin to discuss the matter with Paul, and this is going to bring us to uh, the beginning of chapter 23. I think it's interesting, by the way, that the Romans had the ability to summon the Sanhedrin, and the Sanhedrin obeys. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's very interesting there. Um, now, it's likely the Sanhedrin, who doesn't like the Romans there anyway, um, why, why would they want to come together to this trial? So, because if there actually is any kind of uproar or anything, they can settle it down before Rome gets involved. Uh, they can do that? Okay, what else? What other reason? Only if Rome has the power to put someone to death. Okay, give me another reason. There's another one I'm looking at. Why would the Sanhedrin, why would the Sanhedrin want to come to this trial? Why would the chief priest in the Sanhedrin want to come to this trial? Because that's it. Because they don't like Paul. They want to go there and make sure that their word, I mean, if you're the Romans, and you've heard the Sanhedrin, how many people are in the Sanhedrin? Seven, nine. I thought it was like 70 something. You know, and the chief priest, maybe a dozen of them. You've got 80 plus guys, and then you've got Paul. And you get 80 plus guys saying one thing and Paul saying something else, who do you think the Romans are going to listen to? Okay, this is why, you know, against the historical reason why they would even want to comply with any of Rome's commands, that they would be summoned, they would eagerly want to come and to make an issue out of this. And we're going to actually see um, that there's going to be a, a, a later um, uh, trial in chapter 24 where they, uh, they go up to Caesarea Maritima, that's where Felix lives, that's where Pontius Pilate lived, you know, that was the, the seat of the Roman governor. Uh, sorry, the, uh, the, the governor of Judea. Um, and they actually, these people, they travel up from Jerusalem all the way to Caesarea Maritima just to be at this trial. Okay? So we're, we're going to see how invested they are in this. Um, this is something I didn't feel like typing it out, so I just took a picture of it. Uh, uh, Paul's speech, by the way, this entire speech that he had here shows indicators of Luke's organization based upon a chiasm. So we can see here, A, Paul comes from a Gentile world, Jerusalem. At the end, Paul is sent from Jerusalem to the Gentiles. B, Paul persecutes Christians. B, Paul speaks of his former days as a persecutor. C, he moves from Jerusalem to Damascus. Paul is commanded to leave Jerusalem. So like leaving Jerusalem, leaving Jerusalem. D, has a vision on the road. D, has a vision in Jerusalem. E, Ananias, Ananias. And then the, the middle one is that Ananias tells Paul of his mission. So this not only the function of a chiasm, uh, is twofold. One, to organize something, and two, to highlight the center point. The center point is supposed to be the climax, supposed to be kind of like the peak point of a chiasm. So the major point of the argument is Paul learns of his mission from a Jew to be going out to the Gentiles. Okay? So. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's, 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 it's Does people study their Bibles? Like, really, really, really well? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know. But, but you know, you, you may not see that in there, but the people, like you know, there's there are like fifty of these in the Bible. Like I can see them in Genesis, I can see them in John, I can see them in Paul's letter, I can see them like we've seen we've seen some of these already in Acts. Um, but they demonstrate that look, someone is like you don't talk this way. Nobody talks this way. It means that this, this, just like we've already demonstrated, the speeches in the book of Acts are organized by Luke. Okay? They've got a lot of truth in them, but they're organized by Luke. As, as you already remember, I had to give you that assignment. We're going to talk about Paul's um, conversion, the three different places where Paul's conversion was. And you guys all admitted that um, it's told slightly in different ways, even by the same author, because he has flexibility in organizing the speeches. What do we do today in our, on our papers and our projects and dissertations and whatnot, yeah. we take quotes from people and we organize them in such a way that they make 
one big point. Yeah, like for, for it's your exactly point. the same thing yeah. that we do today. It's just yeah. uh, in the exact organizational way. Like yeah. Kai is doing his like training. Yeah. Thing. Uh, is it possible? So you're saying it's, pro it's not possible at all that any Kai any Kai items aren't made by accident. If we if we see one, it was definitely there purposely. I I think so. Like. I don't think people normally accidentally talk like this. I don't. And also, um, well, Kai has it's like a normal way of writing or poetry or whatever in Greek or. In well, they're they're also in the Hebrew Bible. They're they're also um, I mean you, they're they're and they're in a variety of places. They're in narrative places. They're in prophets. You can see them in the book of in the Psalms. Is it a Hebrew thing or is it? it it's just it's it's a literary. Um, Format, like not, sorry, it's, it's a literary device. style device. Device, device, literary device, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, that was used and understood and, and approved of by um, Israelites, Jews, and early Christians. Greeks too? Were Greeks using Kaiser as well? I, I don't know. I don't. Uh, or Romans or whatever. Yeah, I, um, I assume that. that Luke is writing this in a way that, that would be understood by his readers, which is a Gentile uh, uh, implied um, audience. Um, the point here is that I'm making is that, uh, again, we have an indicator that um, the sayings of Paul um, were organized by, by Luke. I mean, this speech right here, like, how long would it take for you to read this speech? Two minutes. That's not a speech. That's a if you give a sermon that's two minutes long, you would fail that class very quickly. You know, Paul's speech is probably much longer, but it's organized in this manner. So, okay. That's, uh, that's basically what I have uh, for you guys today. Um, no class next week? Huzzah. Huzzah. Yay. No class next week. Huzzah. Okay, so. Um, <clears throat> yeah, just for the holidays. So, you guys have a great week, all right? All right, thank you.